In this question, we're going to look at a problem from our physics interview question bank 2024. If you're interested in our support for interviews, including question banks, courses and mock interviews, do take a look at our website www.vantageadmissions.co.uk. Now you might notice looking at this problem first of all that we have this slightly unfamiliar symbol, this jaggedy line. It just means resistor, so the reason we're not using the symbol that's more standard for resistors on certainly A-level courses is simply for authenticity. The interviewer chose to use this simple symbol. We see this symbol quite a lot in these interviews, so it's a good idea to be prepared. It does just mean resistor as normal. Now, we're considering an infinite system of resistors in this problem, and we want the effective resistance. Infinite is a strange notion. Even though this is a physics question, we should have some experience with mathematics, enough to tell us that we don't really mean infinitely many. What we are really talking about, surely, is a limit. That's the only way in which infinite makes sense. So why don't we write Rn for the system when I've got n rungs? So in other words, if I stop there, the effective resistance of just this would be R1. If I add the next rung, it would be R2. Why don't I think about the finite versions and see if this can give us the insight to think about the infinite limit? Because really, it's so important whenever we're dealing with infinity to remember that really in the back of our minds, it's a limit. So for R1, I've got this set up, so just a single rung. And that's extremely simple because this is just a series circuit, right? These three resistors are all in series. There's no branching, no junctions. So R1 is just going to be 3R, where R is the resistance of each individual resistor. Then let's think about R2. So for R2, we've got this set up. And when we've got complicated parallel circuitry, I always think it helps to redraw things in what I call a more conventional manner. So think about the fact that I've got basically parallel branching junctions here. Really, to get from point A to point B, I've got one path that crosses three resistors and one path that crosses one. So a nicer way I would say to draw this thing is that when I branch, I've got one thing that runs through three and one thing that runs through one. So this is my point B, this is my point A. I'm free to deform things in this way because the only difference between this and that is the shape I'm drawing and I'm putting in bits of wire, but the wire is resistanceless, doesn't make a difference to the actual circuit. And then after B flowing out, I've got one more. Okay, so we should now be able to think about the effective resistance of this setup without too much trouble. So what have I got? Well, I've got this thing in series with this parallel combination. So one of the parallel branches has a resistance 3R, one has R. So if I add these reciprocals together, that gives me the reciprocal of the resistance of this uh, portion so that is going to be um, the actual resistance of that portion. And then I've got another resistor in series. So for R2, I get this, which we can now process. So I've got R plus uh, 4 by 3R, because that is that, um, to the minus 1 plus R, which is R plus 3 quarters R plus R which is 11 quarters R. So we've dealt with the problem of two rungs. We're far from thinking about the infinite case so far. Um, I guess we'd like to think maybe about how one case relates to the next, because only in that such a general way are we going to be able to think about what happens when we go on infinitely far. Well, let's think about R3. So I've now got a rung. And then I've got another rung. And then I've got another rung. 
And in light of what I was just saying about relating one case to the next, it's surely striking that this stuff here is precisely the, the situation that we said was captured by R2. This is the two-rung problem. So what we can say for this thing is that this portion has effective resistance of R2. Now, I'll leave that symbolically as R2. We do have an expression for R2 here. So we see that R3 can be expressed far more simply in terms of R2. And maybe we can now generalize this to think about Rn plus 1 in terms of Rn. Before we generalize, let's complete this calculation. So I guess what I can draw as a kind of effective simpler version is I've got my R, I've got my R, I've got another R, but then over here, it's like I've got an imaginary effective resistor with resistance R2. So what I can now see is that R3 is, so I've got this is in series, this is in series, and then these guys are in parallel. So that's going to give me 2R plus, and if you just do the algebra, R R2 over R1 plus R2. But there's nothing special about going from R3 to R2, right? Because I, what I could now say is that if I want to do Rm plus 1, it's like I've got my rung. And then all the other stuff is like an n-rung resistor. So I can imagine replacing it with Rn. So we've seen the nice thing that happened for R3 to R2, and we've generalized it. Now, this is still far from telling us the answer to the infinite case, but we are going to be able to write down a recursion because I can now see really just using this, but it's n plus 1 and n rather than, um, and of course, r1 is just r. Um, it's just like this, but rather than n plus 1, it's 3, and rather than n, it's 2 we can see that Rn plus 1 is going to be 2R plus Rrn over R plus Rn. So it's the same as the result we derived a minute ago for 2 and 3. So now we've got a handle on the sequence of effective resistances as we add more and more rungs. And what I want to know about is a limit as n goes to infinity. Now, when it comes to applying limits to a recursion, the key idea is that if n goes to infinity, both Rn and Rn plus 1 have settled to this limit value. Because if I'm already at something infinitely large and I've settled to a limit, whether I add another 1 to my index makes no difference. So Rn plus 1 and Rn are both going to tend to this kind of infinite limit case. So that gives me an equation. The resistance of the infinite case must be 2R plus R times the resistance of the infinite case over R plus the resistance of the infinite case. Now we've got the problem on the run because I can solve this equation for R infinity. Multiplying through to clear denominators, I get this. And then I can collect like terms. So actually these go and I've just got... Um, What have I got? I've got R infinity squared minus 2R squared minus 2R R infinity. So remember, R is a constant. It's the resistance of each resistor. That's something we're happy to feature in our answer. So what we want to solve for is R infinity. Well, this is just a quadratic in R infinity. By the quadratic formula, R infinity is going to be... So this is the constant... The, 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 uh, it's like... A is 1, B is minus 2R, C is minus 2R squared. So I get 2R plus or minus square root 4R squared minus minus makes plus 8R squared all over 2, which is 2R plus or minus, and that's 12R squared. So I can pull out an R and also a 4. Well, I can pull out an R squared and a 4, which becomes a 2R and then I'm left with a root 3, right? Because square root 12 r squared is root 12 root r squared, which is 2 root 3 r. So I've got my 2 r and my root 3, and then that over 2. So we simply get 
are lots of 1 plus or minus root 3. But it must be the plus choice because the resistance has to be positive. And so there's our answer. It's the resistance of each resistor times 1 plus root 3. A surprisingly small, very finite resistance for an infinite series of resistors. This is a really common problem. We've seen analogous things asked to engineers too. Really, the big takeaways are trying to apply recursive reasoning by thinking about finite cases and building up. And also this idea for trying to deduce a limit from a recursion. And that could have been, in an easier question, the entirety of an interview problem. So this is quite a tricky question in that even that bit at the end did require uh, some real mathematical know-how.